All right, uh, still talking about compound inequalities. Uh, let's look at what happens whenever we solve some compound inequalities that are not set up in a nice, easy way for us to uh, go ahead and graph. For example, this one. Negative 2x is greater than 12, or 3x is greater than 15. Uh, these look simple enough, but don't be deceived. Uh, you can very easily lose sight of what's going on if you're not careful. You've got the word or here, and remember, when you see the word or and inequalities, that means we're talking about a union. And remember, union means put everything together. Um, well, we got a problem here. Uh, these guys are not solved yet. Uh, there's work that needs to be done before we can really talk about uh, finding the union. So, if we look at this first inequality here to solve this guy for x, we just need to divide both sides by negative 2, and that's using the multiplication property. But, uh, man, can you believe that? We divide it by negative. If you guys remember from the other videos, that means that we have to switch the direction of the inequality. So this is not going to be greater than, it is now going to be less than. So x is now less than negative 6 for this first inequality. Okay. Now, we're not done with this guy, there's still more to be done, because we have this other inequality over here. Well, with 3x is greater than 15, in order for us to solve this for x, Again, divide both sides by the coefficient according to the multiplication property. So divide both sides by 3. Remember, you do not divide by the variable, just the coefficient. And this gives me that x is greater than 5. So now we have these two simpler inequalities, and we do remember that we are having a union because of the word or. Well, as we saw uh, in the previous video, we need to graph both of these on the same number line. And then we're going to um, take what we have on the graph and convert it to interval notation. Now, if we look here, make sure you understand the numbers you're working with. You're working with negative 6, and you're working with 5. So the order that we have on the number line, negative 6 comes first, and then we have positive 5. If I graph this inequality right here, x is less than negative 6. It's an open circle at negative 6. Why? Well, it's not equal to, so that's why it's going to remain open. And then I'm going to shade it out to the left. The other inequality is x is greater than 5, so since it's not equal to, it again will be an open circle. And greater than is coming out to the right. Okay. I would ask if you have any questions about that, but, well, I can't hear you right now. So, I need to describe what I have here using interval notation. As I go from left to right, you see that I have this break here, I have this jump, and this is where you will put in that union symbol. Again, do not write the union symbol like this. If you write it like this with a tail, I'm going to get upset, and then I'm going to have to take my surgical knife, and I gotta cut off the tail that you mutated this U with, and I'm gonna have to take off points. Is that what you want? Probably not, so let's not do that. So, back to this guy right here. How do I describe the left part of this solution set using interval notation? Well, I'm coming from negative infinity, so negative infinity negative 6 using parentheses because I don't have any closed circles and only a closed circle will let you use a bracket. Now the other part starts at 5 since I'm not including 5 parentheses 5 comma infinity and then we're going to close off the parentheses just like that. So here is your solution set for this compound inequality that ends up being a union. Okay. All right, let's try an intersection. Okay. Now, for this intersection, 
it doesn't look like an intersection just yet. But you have to understand what this means to us. If I have this compound inequality here, we need to understand that it means uh, two inequalities smashed together. Basically what we have is this. We have this inequality, x is less than or equal to 21. It also means that we have this inequality. The negative 7 is less than or equal to x. This is really understood to be a compound inequality with an intersection. So if I were to rewrite this, it would literally be negative 7 is less than or equal to x and the other part of this that I have, x is less than or equal to 21. Okay, so you have an and here. This is a built-in intersection. You don't see the word and, and you don't even need to write this. We're going to see some examples where you don't even have to write that. Uh, you're just, you're just going to do it, okay? Now, remember, one of the things we saw in another video was rewriting these inequalities so that x comes at the front. When you rewrite this, that means x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Well, if we do that, then I think it should be pretty easy to see how this guy is going to look when we graph it. Okay? When I graph this guy, the numbers I'm concerned with are negative 7 and positive 21. You have to be greater than or equal to negative 7. So think about it. You have to be greater than negative 7. You also have to be less than 21. So where are you? greater than negative 7 and less than 21, and it's going to be all of the stuff that's in between these two numbers. But now you have to figure out what you're going to do at these endpoints. Well, look at the inequality. It says x is greater than or equal to, so that means you get to be equal to this, so it gets to be filled in, just like that. The other one says x is less than or equal to. Since you get to be equal to, you again get to be filled in, just like that. And that's your solution set. Uh, so you just have to write this using interval notation. We're going from negative 7 to 21. Since we have a closed circle, remember that indicates to us we need to use a bracket on both the open and the in closing part of the interval. Now here's an easier way of looking at this, um, excuse me, the easier way of looking at this uh, compound inequality. Look at x. x is between negative 7 and 21. x is greater than or equal to negative 7 and x is less than or equal to 21. So it has to be all those numbers that are in between these guys. Anything that's in between negative 7 and 21 is going to be your solution set. Now if we keep that in mind, let's do one last quick example here. Suppose I have negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 0. Notice that you have x totally by itself, and he's in between what two numbers? He's in between negative 4 and 0. If I were to graph this, here's negative 4, here's 0. I know that x, which is going to be representing my solutions, will be between negative 4 and 0. The question remains as to what kind of circles I have here. Look at this inequality right here. If you read it going backwards, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So that's why I was going greater than negative 4, and the equal to part means I get to fill this guy in. So there, it's filled in. The other part of the inequality says this. x is less than 0. Less than but not equal to. So he will remain as an open circle. So as long as x is in the middle here for these compound inequalities, there's not much else that you need to do. Graph, and then from the graph we want to write our interval notation, which is going to be from negative 4 to 0, open with a bracket, close with parentheses.